May I ask? Sure, Jillian, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking <clears throat> a little deeper about judge. Yep. And there's like big judge, which is um, I have to make a masterpiece kind of judge. But then there's also internal judge of, am I being authentic? Are these marks authentic right. to me or am I just randomly, you know, scribbling? Right, mm -hmm. right. And I would say for myself with this exercise, I was somewhere in between rand randomly scribbling, but I was judging from the perspective of, do I find this pleasing? Mm. Yeah. So I don't know. I think there's, there's a range of judge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, don't let, yeah, there's also something else can happen, which is that, you know, the tyranny of trying not to judge can also be that, you know, like you get judgmental about for yourself. So, you know, it's all, it's all going to be there that, as I said, what we're trying to do is to learn some skills to hop over that. It's, yeah, you're not going to make it go away, but you you can deal with it so that it's quieter than it use, usually is. Yeah, so that's where we're, <laughs> where we're going to go. Well, guys, thank you so much for being so, um, you know, honest. I really appreciate that. And, you know, this is such an important part of this class is exchanging ideas about how we're thinking about things and learning from each other. Um, okay, so... Uh, I guess I also wanted to say that, um, what's the other thing that I wanted to chat about? It, it will come to me. Um, yeah, all right, it'll, it'll, it'll pop into my head in, in a few minutes. What we're gonna do now is to um, leave that exercise and um, go into, a discussion, as I said, you know, we're, we're, I'm not big on trying to do a lot of technical stuff in class, but I do feel that the, some understanding of color and um, this conversation about color is going to really help us uh, for the rest of the class. So I think it's really worth taking the time today, if you don't mind, and spend a little time kind of going back to color and uh, what, what is color and also color mixing and also how to identify, um, how to identify with color. And I think that's another really big and interesting question as we uh, go into this journey of figuring out what our own personal artwork is going to be. Uh, by the way, yes, that leads me you know, the book that I had mentioned earlier, No More Secondhand Art, the title of that comes from the idea of why should we try to do art like somebody else's art? Like, why should we want to paint like Chagall or like Degas or Picasso when we don't live in 19th century France or Spain or wherever? We are not male. We are not, you know, whatever. I mean, we are who we are, and we want to value that of where we're coming from now as, as being foremost. It's another reason why I don't want to bring other artists into this class as we, you know, really try to go grapple with that. So, you know, it really begs the question, um, you know, how does one identify what is one's own voice? And again, it, you know, we're on a little journey here. Um, in six weeks, we will begin to pick apart that question. Uh, it, it can be a very long journey. And the answer to that is in your art making. So it's just doing it. It's just doing it and, and um, you know, kind of trying to not get stuck into that trap. But if you do believe in that premise, you know, that, and I think more and more it's exhibited in contemporary art. This kind of goes back to the other class that I was teaching before, but you know, contemporary artists are leading the way to having their very personal be part of what we see in in in, uh, in the in art galleries and art museums, you know, and, and places where you might see artwork that you know, it, it, it no longer is, you know, the only the place for people who have been 
you know, trained in, you know, Renaissance technique or whatever it is, you know, this, it, it, we really are so lucky to be living now with this wide vocabulary of, exp of, of ways to express ourselves. People are expressing themselves in embroidery in crochet work and fiber work of all kinds and, you know, found objects and assemblage and, you know, realism and abstraction and everything. So it's very exciting. And what happens to me when I look at other people's work that gets me in interested is it, it makes me feel more brave, you know, to try that and to have that experience. What can it be like? What if, you know, big underline under those two words, what if? So um, that's, those are the words that I would love to you know, have us come back to it again and again in this class, what if? And, and so the more you ask yourself, what if, and ask yourself, what gets you, what would make you so excited? What are you curious about? You know, these are the things that we're gonna really be working toward in this class. One of the assignments that I'm gonna ask you to do, and I'll be in just a second, Judy, one of the ex, uh, oh, okay, 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 Judy. Judy okay, has to leave sorry us. about that. Yep, no problem, I'm gonna record it. I am recording. Um, one of the, um, uh, uh oh, <laughs> my, my train of thought. One of the, <laughs> what was I saying now? Anyway, I'll come around to that again. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, Marianne, did you want to, you're muted. Go ahead and unmute. I'm just saying, I know that feeling, it happens all the time. Oh my God. Well, yeah, Judy got <laughs> a little distracted so in, the, in between. Um, okay, so that's what we're gonna do. What if, what if, and, and you know, what, what's, what's, what is possible and what, oh yeah, I know. So one of the assignments that I'm gonna ask you to do is to go out, to go take a walk this week. And I want you to take photographs, 20 photographs of things that you find on your walk that you're drawn to. And I want you also to try to avoid landscapes, landscape photography and anything that you might think of as a beautiful scene. But go take a photograph of like a beautiful, brilliant yellow piece of, you know, a bottle cap that's on the sidewalk, you know, next to a puddle or whatever it is, you know? So find beauty in the unexpected on your, on your walk and take, take 20 pictures of things that you yourself are just, you know, drawn to because you're curious about it and because it strikes you as something strange or, uh, you know, beautiful in its rustiness or whatever it is. So you get, you, you hear what I'm getting at. This is one of the right ways if we keep track of what we're drawn to, that we begin to understand what it is that, what are, what is our aesthetic? You know, what are we, what do we, you know, yeah, what, what kind of things do we like to see? And it, it can be very instructive to look at a grouping of those photographs. And you could even do this exercise every day for a whole week and see what you end up with at the end of that but 20 is a great place to start to see what it is that you are really interested in looking at. Like over the years, I've found over and over that I am always drawn to sort of images that seem to be floating, you know, in space. I've always been, I'm much more interested in the mic, you know, in looking at something like this close to my face than I am in a big vista. I've never been. So that's something that's like really common to me. And I find that that's reflected in my work now. I didn't try to make it happen, but I'm just noticing. So those are some things that you can do every day. You can do something like that to, you know, become more and more um, aware of what it is that you are drawn to. So let's well, talk about yeah. color because color is a big thing that affects us as we as we work with paint. I'm sorry, Marianne, did you have a question? I just wondered if you want us to send those on Padlet. Yes, yes, yes. So I will send you both, you know, the uh, in invitations for Padlet and then you'll, you'll, yes, upload those 20 pictures as well as I'm going to give you a homework assignment too. But um, that's definitely one of them. So we're going to mix paint today. <laughs> and um, I would love everybody to put out their colors that um, I asked you to get. Uh, right out in front of you, the, the, the acrylic colors, 
So you should have two, two reds. You should have magenta and a regular red, right? Naphthol red or something, pyrrole red. Does that ring a bell, everybody? Yeah. Okay, the two yellows, <coughs> the two blues, white and black. And let's put them right out in front of us and a big sheet of paper. So I know um, this is a very small knit and I wasn't even going to bring it up, but I already okay. had cadmium yellow in the okay. fluids. So I did fine. buy one of the yellows. I bought the Darialide, but not, so I assume it's not the end of my No, that's fine, Julie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Career. Absolutely. I don't blame you for not wanting to spend more money. Absolutely. No, this is great. So yeah, let's just go ahead and put them in front of you. We are going to be doing some color mixing. And then what we're going to do is um, those pictures that you sent me, you got a palette. You're going to get a palette. <laughs> and then you're going to mix those palette colors that you got from that picture. So, um, but first we're going to mix colors. Jen, uh, turn, yeah, mute, unmute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Say that last sentence again. Okay, so, so, right, yeah. In, in a, a few minutes, I'm going to, uh, to take your photo. So send me a photograph, anything, like I said, you know, this is a photograph that we're going to use to randomly generate a palette from which you guys are going to mix colors. How do I send you a photo? Send it to me an email. A photo of anything? Yeah. It, really anything. Yeah, it's just to generate some color, Jen. It's no, no, not a biggie, not, no biggie. I had asked, you know, like you were saying uh, before to send something from nature, but it doesn't even have to be. It could be anything that's on your computer screen or anything that's, you know, take a picture of your desktop. I mean, really, literally anything. It really doesn't Okay, matter. and email it to you? Right now, yep. What's your email address? Arch at gmail. Okay. This is very, very random. It's very random and it's totally fine if it is, because this is just a way that, you know, you're each going to have your own personal color palette. Um, I'm going to show you what, I, what, I've, what I've done with it in a, um, in a few minutes. So, but that's for later. Okay, did everybody send, send, me, send that to me? Okay, so good. Yep, I don't want that. Let me turn the camera on. There we go. Okay. Okay. Anybody all set with that? I'm still doing it. Okay, okay. Take your time. So I had to step out to freshen my water. Um, what should I be doing right now? Oh, oh, you did it already. I was just saying to um, Jen and uh, Marianne that they still need to send me their photographs. So I, I just oh, got okay. uh, Marianne's. Yeah, because you already did it, Jillian. All right. So right now I have that image open, the one that has the palette you sent me. Yes, but we're, yeah, we're, and we're going to hold on to that. But first, we're going to do a, a, a little bit of a color mixing exercise. A new message. So I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, okay. Why isn't it letting me do this? Um, why won't it let you write? It's funny, I don't know how to do this. Oh, are you emailing Martin? I'm trying to figure out on this email on my phone how yeah. to send you an email. <laughs> and it seems like all I ever do on the phone is reply. So there's... Ah. Wait a moment, there must be, you sent an email, so let's find you. All right, yeah. let me find you. Okay. If you open your pictures, open your photos, select a photo, 
Look down in the left hand corner of that photo, there's a box with an arrow, a straight up arrow. Photo. Open, open the photo. Gallery. Yep. Yep. Le bottom left, there should be a little box with an arrow sticking, going in the direction of up. Is it an iPhone that you have? No. Oh. You know what, Jen, it's not worth worrying about right now. We, I, I, I will, I will give you a photo. Fine. No, don't worry. Don't worry. Not worth taking the time. We, we don't have a lot of time. So don't right. Worry. Exactly. Let's not do this. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I know uh, we, we, we are getting ourselves very techno technologically ad adept here. And, and so no worries, not a problem. Um, okay. So Did you get what, we, what we want to do is a little color wheel. So take a big, take one of your sheets of paper. All right, take one of your 18 by 24s, put it on your table. Yep. Okay. And the first thing I want you to do is to make a big circle. So this is just to get us to be a little bit more familiar with the colors that I asked you to get. Um, because you, as you, you know, mix colors and you're gonna, you know, we're gonna be doing a bit of this in this class. I want you to know and be a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, and it's really only one way to do that. And it, it is by, by doing it ourselves, by trying it out. So some of you have done color wheels, some of you have never done color wheels, but if you've never done them, um, it's a great exercise. If you have done them, every time you do them with different colors, th that'll look different. So uh, I, I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with doing many, many color wheels over our artist's life. So, but what we're going to do is um, put a, a small circle at 12 o'clock. All right, so put a small circle on the outside of your larger circle or the inside of your circle at 12 o'clock. Could you okay. say that one more time? Put a circle on top of, you know, um, here, I'm gonna share my screen, uh, let's see. Uh, put, it, put it, yeah, just draw a circle, a small circle at 12 o'clock. Like if your circle is a clock, right? Yeah. Then right at the very top, that's 12 noon, right? Right. Make a smaller circle, okay? And that's gonna call, be called red. Do we label it? Yes. Okay. Now Do the we... question is, what is red, you guys? What are your colors? Yes, you do have a color that says pyrrole red, right? But if you squeeze that out, do you think that that is the red of your dreams? Put a little bit in that circle and let's see what you have discovered. Did you just say put the red in the circle? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Your pyrrole red, put that in your circle. All right, I got naphthol. Naphthol. Yep, put it in a circle. And I want you to tell me if that is the red that you would, that, that, is, the, that is the ultimate red for you or not. Do you think that's pretty close to your idea of red? And I'm asking this for, for a very particular reason. No. No. Okay. Right, because you know what? We all have ideas of what red is in our heads. It's not like right. math, right? It's not, I mean, the color red is not like the number two. Right. Two is two, no matter where it is, it's two. Right. But red, it's subjective, right? Right. We all have a slightly different idea of what red is. And that's so interesting. So color wheels are also kind of subjective. But you have another, version of red there, you have a quinacridone, you have a magenta, right? 
Mm-hmm. You yeah. add a little yeah. bit of your magenta to that little dot of red. See what happens when you do that. Does it make it more like the red that you have in mind as being red or less like it? Less. <laughs> okay, what do you need to do to that to make it more like the red that you envision as being the ultimate red, apple red or whatever it is? Lighten it. All right, try it, Jen. Uh, try it, Marianne. So what I'm getting at here is that it may be that you think it needs a little more yellow. Maybe it, maybe it needs, uh, Marianne thinks it needs white. Um, what do you, what's your end result? You want us to end up with the color we think of as red? Yes, I do, I do. So if you're mixing, let me make a, I, wait, Marianne, before you do that, oops, too late. <laughs> I was okay, if you're going to mix a color, what you wanna do is to just add a little bits of it. So take your palette knife and move that white off to a palette. Okay, all right. And I'm going to share my screen and bring up to you a, a, uh, a little um, video here. I'm going to show you a short video that's going to help this whole thing. Um, here we go. Okay, put your brushes in water for a moment. And I think this, this video might um, help to demystify some of what I'm talking about here. I'm going to talk right now about um, the color wheel and some of the different things you might want to learn about the color wheel. So we're going to start with these colors um, that I have there, uh, acrylic colors by Golden, and they are um, six different pigments. So diarylide yellow, which is a warm yellow, <clears throat> We have benzimidazolone yellow, which is a lemon yellow. We have pyrrole red, which is a, um, we might call it a true red, a warm red um, toward the yellow, toward the orange. Quinacridone magenta, very important color, can't live without it. It is my second red. You know, I usually have two reds, two yellows, and two blues. The quinacridone magenta is must-have color. We'll see why in a few minutes. And two blues. So this is phthalo cyanine blue. Um, and we have ultramarine blue. So we have six colors. And we're gonna show you also what happens when we mix white and black. So we're going to try to figure out how we use those six different pigments to make the traditional colors that we kind of have a pretty much a good idea of what they should look like. So let's start with yellow. Um, now, I, I would just reiterate that um, colors are subjective and you can make this color wheel with a bunch of different kinds of colors. You can make this color wheel with just three colors. Um, but we're going to try to do it with six because I just think it gives you a little bit better range. So what yellow would be the ultimate yellow? Would it be 
the warm one or the cool one? Maybe um, what you decide is that the ultimate yellow is actually a mixture of these two together. So I think that's what we're going to go for today um, just because we have the luxury of these two pigments. I'm going to just go ahead and put a little bit of the yellow down in my circle for yellow just add a, just a drop of the um, sort of egg yolk yellow to that and take my in there. So maybe that is the ultimate yellow. You may disagree, um, and that's totally fine. Um, but as I said, it's objective. All right, let's make orange. Um, so for orange, I think we would just go for the diarylide yellow because it's already halfway there. That's that warm, warm yellow we used. So I'm just going to put a little bit, just a drop of that in there. And I'm going to take a little bit of our pyrrole red because, again, it's closest. Um, you could take magenta, and you could you could make a nice orange out of magenta. But again, since we have the luxury of these six colors, I'm going to go for the pyrrole red. And I'm just going to open this up and mix them out because we're almost to the end of this container here. And go ahead and mix it right there. So that seems a little bit too orange, perhaps. Uh, too red, and what I can do is just add a little bit more yellow. Easy peasy. There we go. Maybe that's a better orange, and you could you can play with it. And if you don't like a color, what can happen is after this is dry, just go back over it. Uh, the beauty of acrylics. All right. So for our, I want to point out that um, I am using different viscosities of the acrylic paint, mixing them freely. And so this is something that you can do with acrylics. It doesn't matter if you have the thick, you know, stuff that comes out of a tube as you saw me using in the yellow or the very thin one that comes in these squirt tubes. These are the thinnest like acrylic ink. They are infinitely intermixable. So what we really are concerned here more is with the pigment itself. And it gets confusing because of the pigment name. So you heard me say, Diarylide yellow. I think that's one of the ones that I would asked you guys to get. It's a, you know, sort of egg yolky color of yellow that's very different from the other one, which was more like a, you know, like a lemony color. So these are the kinds of things that I want us to be aware of, you know, as you're doing this. I'm going to ask you actually to do this color wheel during our week, um, you know, away from class. So I won't take the whole time to show you, but I, I you know, I think there are a couple of things to, to understand here. That color is subjective. Right. And, you know, your your yellow, you know, ultimate yellow is, is going to be somebody else's too orange yellow, you know, or somebody else's will agree with you. But it's really depends on what pigments you're using. You know, it, it, and you could do many color wheels and you'd get, you know, similar results. You would never get the exact same results because you are always going to have different variables. So. Um, let me, uh, let me just go a little bit further in this. I'm gonna skip over. So you are going to be doing this and don't worry, I'm gonna be sending you a template so you know, remember how to do this. I'm also gonna be sending you this video so you can watch it more at your leisure. But I do wanna just advance it a little bit more to get to the point where we're talking about adding white. So right now we're not adding white to any of these colors and your colors right out of the tubes or the bottles here are going to be transparent. That is just the nature of, well, golden. If you bought golden, they don't have any white mixed into them. So you're never gonna be able to get a color. It's gonna be able to be painted over another color without seeing that other color through it if you don't add white. So I'm just gonna take this up to, um, all right, so that's, that's your finished color wheel. And as you can see, you know, the hallmark of it is that when you squint, you don't have too big of a jump between the different colors, that they kind of all gradually sort of fade into each other. You know, maybe the, the one that I need to work on more is making this orange have a little bit more yellow in it, because right now this is a little bit too big of a gap. But everything else seems to be nicely kind of running into each other. But that green, as you notice, is not a Kelly green, is it? No, 
No, it's more of a forest green. And that has a lot to do with the blue that you use. You know, and again, you have two blues. I made my blue by, by mixing both of the blues that I gave you. But you know, it's always gonna be a little different. But this is what I mean about, um, I think it's a good idea to do this exercise now and earlier in the class because you're not gonna get this, you know, in one class. You're, it's, this is a, something like a, really a work in progress, but I do want you to know where at least to begin with these pigments that you have. What I wanna do is to show you what happens when you add white and, and also what happens when you add black. So we're just gonna advance this a bit further. Okay, so here we go. A little bit more. And when you add white to your color, you make it opaque. In other words, you won't be able to see what's beneath it because when you add titanium white, that is the thing that makes all colors more opaque. Okay, so that's the tint of yellow green. And then we're going to add black to yellow green. And we're going to see what the shade is. So I have my black paint over here. So when, again, when you add white to the color, you're making a little bit of tint. Black and white. And you're also making it a little Although this is a little bit of that color. Trying to be lighter. But if you a just little bit color, of black to it. Don't add too much because if you do, you just won't be able to see the color. I'm going to make it, you know, just enough. Nope, not quite enough there. I can see that I need to mix up a little bit more of my green. My shade. Did you add black there? Yeah, that's because black. Black mixed with the green really will give you this again, it's much tricky, darker so green. It's not, you're not going to get too so much black. It didn't so white in it. Color. No, no white in it. No, it yeah. You're going to keep it very separate. Value. So the black has no other white in it. So you'll be surprised going back to the first color the colors you make when you mix black into it. Um, uh, some really beautiful colors. All right, we're going to stop there. So, okay, I, I um, oh, as I said, I'm going to get send you the link to this. But this is our assignment, which is to, and I'm going to send you the template you know, how to lay it all out like this. But when you do this at home, I'm hoping that you will get a little bit better grasp of what these colors are like actually and what they do when they're mixed with white and black because it'll just expand your ability. Now, the other thing that I wanna do, have you do, this is a, a bit of a, a bit of homework this week. Don't worry about it. I, I would like you to maybe, you know, um, just thinking maybe we should save this for early in next class and maybe we should do this, but, and that would be fine. So let me also show you what, um, to share the screen one more time, Jillian, for example, sent me a picture and her picture was this one, all right? Okay. And then there's a very nifty little online gadget that allows you to pull out a color palette from this photograph. And so I did this. This is Jillian's picture. And oh. these are her assigned color, a color palette. Because when you work non-representationally, where do you start with your color? And so because I want us to start working with color pretty soon, I had asked you to you know, send in a photograph. It could really be anything. It could be a still life. It could be you know, your desktop, as I said. It could be a picture of your hand. I mean, it could be anything, but this nifty little gadget, which I'll send you the link to and you can try it yourself, pulls out color combinations from your picture. So that's what I'm gonna ask you to do is to then try to mix these colors, these four colors, in a, in a bit of a quantity so that we can use these in our uh, upcoming classes. So I think what I'm gonna say is, 
we will do this in class beginning next week because I think it's a lot to ask you to do everything. And also I wanna walk you through how you actually mix up a larger quantity of paint. Because I find that when people start working with acrylics, their natural impulse is to add a lot of water to them. And then they end up painting, you know, with a, they got a lot of streaks in them. It's kind of a watercolor effect, which isn't bad, but it, you are, are missing using acrylics for the gorgeous black color that they can give you. So I, I want to make sure that everybody understands how to do that in this class. And we will be using this information as we move forward uh, in the next six weeks. Is that color palette, is that a program? Yes, yeah, it's on Canva. And I'm going to send everybody uh, your, you know, your, you can do it yourself. You can easily do it for yourself. I thought we were going to uh, maybe have time to do it, but I, I see that we're not. So it, so it, you know, you can, you can do it on your own or I will also be able to send it to you. But yeah, it's right on, it's something that's accessible through the web, right on your large screen. And you can put your own, you just drop, you know, your own photograph right in there and it gives you this color palette. Oh so, because a lot of what we do in this class will be very spontaneous and almost by chance. Because, you know, when we're working in an abstract mode, you know, we need a way to just make some decisions, you know? And it doesn't have to always be like this, that you're always going to go to chance to get your color palette. But for our purposes, it's a great way to start. And previous to this, I had asked people to go to a hardware store and go to the paint bar, or whatever, and get you know the samples you can get for free to paint your house, which is a great way to grab a whole bunch of colors, but it kind of limits you because obviously you can't grab them all. The people might say, hey, hey lady, what are you doing? You know, and you may not have access to a color sample chart at home. So this is a great way to get some colors kind of immediately right from the web, right from a, a picture that you happen to really like. So always in this class, I wanna go back to something that you are akin to. You know, I asked you to choose a photograph that you like of nature, you know, because already you have a familiarity with it. You took the picture, so you were drawn to it for some reason. And so that seems like a great way to generate a set of colors. To if I... With. Sorry, Adria. Yeah. If I don't have a photo and I take one this week, can it be a photo of something from a book because it's all white outside? <laughs> yeah, it should be surprised, Jen. I bet you if you if you get down low and 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 get get into some, if you can find, well, it's up to you. Absolutely, a book is fine, or just something inside your house, even literally okay. your kitchen. All right. Literally your kitchen with me. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Andrea. Yeah. Do you have handy that other photo I sent you? Because I think it's a really good example of a lot of color in the winter. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. right, right, right. Yeah, here it is. Um, let me share that. Yeah, so there's, yeah, you know, you can get it. Oh, this one? Oh, no, another one, right? The other one. Okay, sorry. Yeah, let me grab that really quick for you. Um, that's right. Uh-oh, screen sharing has stopped as the window has closed. What? Okay, all right. Um, all right, we have time to find this. Hold on a second. Oh, you know what, Jillian? I don't think I, I even downloaded it. I think I was just uh, trying to work pretty quickly, but let me, let me find it. Well, so the point was, um, so we take a walk in Groton by the Nashua River, and yeah. uh, there was a lot of ice. And yeah. underneath the ice were all these red we go. Look how gorgeous that is. Yes. Yes. And we could put that into the picture, into the palette, you know, maker, and you'll get probably some really interesting colors to make. But there is a lot of color. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's possible, uh, not knowing where exactly where you live, um, Aunt Jen, you know. But yeah. you you can or 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 find something in your house. Um, it 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 doesn't really matter. As I said, but kind of you know you can go and do this in many different times. And yeah. um, but the idea here is that we're going to find color palettes that are unusual. They are you know they're not like going to be a tube of paint that you have squeezed right out of the tube. You're going to have to make these colors, and that's where understanding, you know, how these colors 
relate to each other, are they warmer? Are they more toward red or are they more toward blue? You know, are they warmer or cooler? And what you know, you need to make, getting used to making those colors and having to mix them to match something outside of our brains is a great exercise. And it, it just makes you more sensitive when you look at color, like this crazy bright green that I'm wearing, is this a red green or is this a blue green? You, anybody wanna try to take a, <laughs> what do you think? I'm gonna say this is more toward red. Yes. Yeah. Right? Because it isn't Kelly green. I think if we all understand what Kelly is. It's more like a yeah. this bright, you know, kind of grassy green. It's not. So this has red in it. So what we're going to do is help to train our eyes to be able to get yes or you know figure out if I want this color, what colors will I need to use to make it? And I'm going to help you through this. We're doing this next week. So your assignment this week will really be to go ahead and make a whole color chart and add white to that color and then add black to that color that you made. And I'm gonna send you a full description. I'll even make a separate video, which will you know, kind of get into this more for you. Okay, so your assignment, 20 photographs of things that you are drawn to. Not scenic, not necessarily beautiful to anybody, eyes, anybody else's eyes but yours. And doesn't even have to be beautiful. Could be strange, could be creepy, could be um, fascinating. You're drawn to it. Who knows? All right, questions? <laughs> no questions, great. All right, well, thank you so much, you guys. I'm so glad to meet you all again, to see you all oh, again, to know you. And uh, thanks, Jean, and um, to be continued. <laughs> I, have one, I have one question, Andrea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have all these bits of wet paper towels with acrylic on them. Yeah. Can I just wipe them all over my sheets of paper or no? Sure. You Absolutely. don't care? I mean, rather than waste the, the oh, paint. Oh, I see. Oh, because you've already made those. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, part of this is, yeah, you are you are going to go through some paint. Some of it will be used, some of it will not be. Um, I would rather that you keep those kind of pristine for our, our next classes, if you okay. could. Yeah. Yep. Sharon, you could just put them on a clean sheet of paper and you could use those colors yep. you're making for something else. Why not do that? Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Adrian. You're welcome. See you guys later. Next I'll, send a, I'll send another reminder next week. Thanks.